Uh, so metamaterials is the science of uh, ma materials that do not occur in nature that we can uh, fabricate in our laboratories and enable us to do interesting and unusual things with light. Um, it's a relatively new science. It's, uh, uh, although it was uh, proposed theoretically in the 60s, it's only in the last decade or so that we're able to um, fabricate metamaterials in the laboratory. Um, and they've led to some extremely interesting and unusual applications, including um, the celebrated optical cloak, uh, for example, and even lenses that are, um, in some sense, perfect, or that actually uh, behave much better than conventional lenses. Um, and moreover, we are able to look at uh, uh, lenses that have uh, different and unusual properties, such as being very, very thin and being able to direct light um, in ways that are not possible using conventional materials. And so it's the general um, theme of being able to create materials that can manipulate light in ways that really haven't been possible um, previously. And so that's why it's opened up a whole new area of, uh, uh, of science, optical science, and, in, and, and indeed sci uh, beyond optical science, so metamaterials are influencing other areas of uh, uh, physics, such as acoustics and uh, um, thermal um, physics. One of the uh, major instigators of the field of metamaterials um, was Victor Veselago, um, a Russian scientist, who in the 60s um, uh, proposed some very interesting ideas that were simply beyond technology at that time, but they were very visionary ideas. Um, and he, he proposed um, some concepts related to how um, light interacts with matter. If you think of light as electromagnetic radiation, uh, there are two parts to the wave that forms uh, the electromagnetic field. There's an electric part and there is a magnetic part. In terms of the optics that we're familiar with in everyday um, life, um, it's really the, how the electric field interacts with the material that is important. Um, it's, that, and that's mostly uh, what determines the, um, the colours and how much things reflect and that, that kind of thing that we're familiar with in everyday life. However, what Victor Veselago did was to examine beyond the electrical response of uh, a material, what would happen if we had some control over the magnetic response at the same time? So there are two parts to the wave. There's the electric part and there's a magnetic part. And he examined what would happen if, um, if we had control not just over the, the everyday electrical response, but also um, in some, perhaps in some future way, we would have um, control over the magnetic response. Now, because he, he was quite visionary, he proposed that these, the numbers that are associated with the electrical response and the magnetic response could take any value whatsoever. So we start with everyday response, electrical response, where it has a positive value. Um, but he suggested it could have a negative value, not just in the electrical component, but also in the magnetic component. And this is really quite um, an unusual idea, um, but um, it's something that we can appreciate with a, a very simple everyday example. We're, we're familiar with the response of things being in the same direction as the, the force or the field that pushes it in a particular direction. So, if I take, for example, this um, mass on a spring, um, I can apply a force with my hand and the mass goes up and down in the same direction. But if we go through some resonance, then the force and the mass actually move in opposite directions. And it's this idea that the force, or the, in this case the electric field and the magnetic field that make up light, can produce a response in a material 
um, that is opposite to the direction in which those fields are acting that is quite crucial to the science of, uh, of metamaterials, that we can produce responses that simply don't occur naturally. What we discovered um, later on was that it was possible to create these responses using artificial media um, that are in which we, we take a, a material and we include very small metallic um, uh, structures and they behave in the, in, in the manner of a resonance much as my mass on a spring so that we're actually able to produce the, um, uh, that kind of negative response. Um, in terms of how light sees such uh, structures, it's always the case that the wavelength, the, 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 the distance between the crests of the waves, is always very much greater than the tiny structures that we make inside metamaterials. And just as a natural material is determined by the uh, chemistry or the atoms and how the electrons move, our artificial media or meta media, meta materials, are determined by these very small sub-wavelength inclusions that uh, um, uh, we're able to create. Um, in Victor Vesselago's um, development of the subject, he noticed that um, he, he looked at, he examined what happened if we had um, a, a, ne a negative electrical response and a negative uh, magnetic response. And he was able to relate the simultaneously negative properties to what was effectively a negative refractive index. We're familiar in everyday life with the idea of light bending and refracting through media. When we're at uh, school, we learn about how light refracts as it uh, passes from, for example, from air to, to glass. Um, and we characterize that bending with a quantity called the refractive index of the glass. And what Victor Vesselago explored was the possibility that as resulting of these negative parameters that the refractive index is negative and actually that the bending of light is extreme so that when light come, enters to a, a material made uh, with these simultaneously negative properties it bends not just a little bit but actually bends drastically it's so-called negative refraction. And he proposed another, a number of other phenomena um, that would be associated with materials with these properties. But that was the most significant one. So this idea was taken up um, in, here at Imperial College by Professor Sir John Pendry in the physics department, um, where um, he published an extremely influential, important paper that examined um, how um, the, uh, a, a material that has this negative property, a negative refractive index, could be formed up into a, a lens. A very simple um, idea is actually a slab of this material could actually refract light um, very simply and very naturally to form a lens. But it was a lens that had um, extraordinary properties, at least in theory. It was a lens that could take the object and exactly reproduce that object in the image. A so-called perfect lens that was free of any of the um, distortions or aberrations that we associate with conventional lenses, such as the lenses that my glasses are made out of. A, a lens fabricated out of a, a material, if we could make it, out of these simultaneously negative electric and magnetic properties could, in principle, um, image an object perfectly. And this was a remarkable and, and, at the time, highly controversial result, but is now generally accepted to be correct. The challenge then, of course, is to actually make such a, a device and obviously um, when such a new piece of science is proposed, there are many other applications that, that spin out of that. And so in the, in the decade following um, that, that publication, there was really a, a, an enormous uh, growth of the um, uh, attempt to actually make materials with these unusual parameters. Uh, and in fact, some of the ideas that were originally um, proposed 
um, to make a perfect lens were actually um, implemented in the laboratory. Not absolutely perfectly, but beyond the, the limits that we thought were conventionally applicable. And so we, we have this interesting situation um, where the theory shows that something can be done perfectly, which is um, something that we, was unexpected for, for us as uh, theoretical physicists. And it moves the challenge then to the experimentalists and the technologists to actually um, implement that and reach that uh, goal. Um, it makes our um, possibility to make something perfect a matter of technology, a matter of bucks rather than uh, a matter of principle. So following these um, groundbreaking ideas, the, the whole uh, field of metamaterials has exploded and has given rise to many different um, possible directions. We're now uh, looking at um, being able to make very small antennas um, that can be made what we call meta surfaces that can direct light in very um, interesting and uh, novel ways. And this, for example, could um, be used in satellite communications, it could also be used to improve the uh, lenses in our mobile phones and this kind of technology. It's also given rise to some very intriguing possibilities in terms of bending light for actually cloaking objects or making them invisible or even actually hiding um, events in, in time. Uh, so there are many directions that are being pursued at present.